Hello YouTube fans, Matarant here, and welcome to a deck profile with Shadol Gradle, the deck I've been using on my channel for the last two weeks, and the deck I'll be using IRL as a fun deck, but the only way I'm going to be playing Shadol in the future for the November 2015 ban list. So if you want to go straight to the deck profile, uh, click the link in the description, as I'm just going to briefly talk about uh, why I chose to make this deck. So, I've been a fan of Shadol's for quite some time now, since they since we got the first information about Shadol Core and Shadol Falco and I think, think Shadol Dragon or Shadol Beast, and I think Construct or Window was also in there, I fell in love with that. The artwork is visually stunning, and it's quite, it's just, the archetype is really unique. It brought back Fusion into the meta scene, and... It's also brought back flip effects, which is not a common, not a common that, um, mechanic that was used at that point. And the versatility and powerfulness is quite unrivaled for some of the decks of that time until Necros. So Shadal was really fun, and I enjoyed it. I played the deck for quite some time in original form, being um, a heraldic beast. Um, mix mashup which was not very consistent until I went to Star Seraph and then eventually in this dying age with clowns um, but I enjoyed the deck very much and I didn't want to lose it I have a lot of sentimental value to my Shadol deck and I did not want to lose it so I went, I went and tried to make a deck that could be viable for the November 2015 ban list and would also incorporate one of my favourite Shadol fusion monsters, which is El Shadol Grista, being very underrated and very powerful in the Pendulum era. So, Gradles were a good choice because I also wanted to make Gradle at the time, because it's a nice niche um, Snatch Deal archetype that could be splashed into quite a lot of things. It could just actually be just side deck cards at this point. That could be really fun to do, really fun to use. So this was a logical choice for me to mix the two decks together. And there were other alternatives that I did try, which were Volcanic um, Shadol, but that was never consistent enough, even with Construct. And I did get a chance to try um, Trap Tricks, but I don't really like it that much. If I'm going to make a Trap Tricks deck, I'm probably going to do it Trap Tricks Bears Stoma over Trap Tricks Shadol. So yeah, let's um now head into the deck profiles. So I'm running two of each Shadal except from Hound, because no one runs Hound. I run them at two e two of each because I think Dragon now has more versatility in the fu in the future of Shadal decks because pendulums are such a oncoming storm that Shadal Dragon will be quite used in that sense. Beast is just a draw engine, Squamato is our foolish. Hedgehog is our search, and Falco is our erection, resurrection. The Shadol lineup is quite basic, basic in that sense. And then for the Gradle lineup, I run one Gradle Slime, one, two Grey Legal, two Cobra, and two Alligator. I run them in this uh, volume because I don't want to be drawing too many Gradles. In this first version, I was running triple of each, and that clogged quite a lot. I meant I was too subject to Abyss Dweller. And I would lose two it if I, if that happened. Whereas at these in this quantity is very good. It gives me a lot of versatility without clogging my deck. And one Gradle Slam because I do like the combo to bring out Gradle Dragon, and it's quite fun. Plus the artwork for Gradle Slam is quite nice as well. It's a parasite archetype, and I've always enjoyed parasitic parasitic archetypes. So yeah, we go into one mathematician because we don't really allow one anymore. It's so sad. I miss my mathematicians at three. Loved having them turn one. But now we just get one of them. And he has quite a lot of versatility in the deck. He can send any Shadol. He can send my Slime. Or he can send my glow Bulb. And just gave me plays from there on. He's just so good and he also gives me a draw so that's nice. Then I play two Fire and two Ice Hand. This is basically to have a little bit more viciousness into the deck, give it a little bit more aggressive plays, can get over some certain cards like pendulums in the form of beating down with your hands, just crashing them in and then 
blowing up the field, which is always fun. Not to mention, it gives me access to El Shadal Grista through Shadal Fusion. And that's exactly what I wanted that to be like, but Volcanic weren't consistent enough, so this one works better. Should point out at this point that this will not compete against Cosmo, you will need to um, side a hell of a lot for Cosmo, because Cosmo is one of the most dangerous uh, matchups for this kind of deck. It is more tier 2 based than tier 1 because it will never be tier 1 again, but it will have a lot of aggressiveness as a rogue deck that you may eventually come across, or if you would decide to play it, it may be quite aggressive against your opponent. Then we go on to 2 max C because the Pendulum Era is now, and we might as well start mainly these max Cs. Currently only at 2, but probably in the future it will be bumped up to 3 because Maxi is God, in this sense, in this era, I should say. And then one Glow Up Bulb gives me access to Shakinaga a little bit more easily, and Glow Up Bulb also gives me access to Trishula, because now that I have Trishulas, I always want to put them in my decks. Literally, you'll see, if you see, watch my Match Spectre uh, deck profile, which will be up soon, you'll see Trishula, because that's so fun. And then onto the spells, we got Triple Shadow Fusion, the only one we are allowed a triple except from Neff, and Neff is not worth it. Shadow Fusion is still very dangerous, especially in the Pendulum era, because there's extra deck monsters that they summon through their Pendulum summon, are going to be getting Shadow Fusion to its maximum potential. It's very good to bring out your Shakinaga or your Garista very effectively. You can also go for your Winder plays, no utilities you don't really want to go into unless you have no other choice or your opponent is a Tello player, because no utilities is decent against Tellers. Not against Necros, because Necros is not going to be that much of a problem anymore. There is a gem like form of Necros now, but it's not going to be something that's in, that you probably want to use several no utilities for. Then what else should all fusion? We're only allowed it at one. We're so sad. I miss it at three. It's very good, but in this deck, it's not needed. It goes to your OTKs, but that's about it. It doesn't do much of anything else. Then triple gradle impact. This is the tanky and destruction of the deck. So it has. A lot of versatility, it can, you can surge out your great alligator to do the combo, or you can start popping things and snatch dealing as much as you like. Depending on the given situation, usually if you open up with this and sub Shadol, it will give you cer certain um, advantages, because they may go straight to for a pistol weller thinking you're just pure gradle, but then they flip over a dragon or a squamata in a better circumstance and lose their abyss dweller. Some are siding two abyss, siding a second abyss dweller, but it's not going to be too problematic. So then I go on to one Regeki, which is all right. Regeki is staple as everyone knows in this format. It's like Harpy's Feather Duster in the OCG, and yeah, not much else to say about Regeki. Two Super Rush Headlong. This is a shot print from Docs, which is very, very underrated and very, very powerful. So for those of you who don't know, don't know what this card does, you declare one attribute and then you target one face of monster you control, not theirs. So you can't. Uh, so it's not going to be too bad against Cosmo. And then if the face up monster you control battle an opponent's monster of the declared attribute while you control it. Destroy the opponent's monster at the start of the damage step, which is very powerful. It gives any of your Shadow monsters the effect of Construct. It's a pseudo-construct in that sense, and that's why it works perfectly with this deck. You can make Winder, basically Winder on steroids at this point, or Grister on steroids, because it's just so great, and it's not very expected. It's a quick play, so you can use it on their turn. And you can laugh at the things that you can do with it. I'm thinking of bumping up to 3 in the deck, but I am not 100% sure about that. I don't want it to clog. Then onto the trap cards. Um, one Shadol Core, which is staple in all Shadol decks right now. Don't really need two, even if the Shadol lineup is kind of sparse and the Shadol fusions and stuff are sparse. You don't really need more than one Shadow Core in any given circumstance. I'm not running really Sinister Shadow Games, as I rather have the Shadows in my deck this time than getting down and going for speed. 
then two Greedle Split. This is where the synergy with Greed with the Shadows comes into play. Greedle Split is a very powerful Greedle trap card, which is a common in Darks. And you can target one face of monster you control, equip it, and gain 500 attack. So it can make Winder get over something like 2500 attack or something like that. It can get over Majesty's Fiend and Fantasy's Fiend, which is nice. But the main effect that you would be using is when you send it to the graveyard, you can destroy the monster equipped with it. And if you do special summon two Gradles, they're destroyed during the end phase. This allows you to set up Gradle Cobra to destroy an end phase and then snatch deal, or go for a Gradle Dragon play. But the more better effect in that sense is that it destroys the monster not as a cost therefore you will gain all your shadol effects if you haven't used them that turn so a draw a mst a foolish a search or a resurrection will happen when you get split so it gives you a lot of synergy with that destruction effect whereas something like maturia beast or global they won't give you any synergy since they are cost and no and don't give you anything to from that. So that is great and it gives a synergy for the deck that it really needs. Then one torrential tribute for some control aspect to the deck because uh, Shadal's still gaining a lot of things from torrential tribute. I didn't want to use Dark Hawk because I didn't want to put too much monster removal, redo, removal in. Super Rush Headlong works at, at least in theory better than uh, Dark Hall would. And then one breakthrough skill because it's breakthrough skill. We don't need Veilers in this deck, Veilers is no longer an applicability in the Shadows as much as you would think because Construct is dead. R.I.P.'s Construct, I will really miss you. On to the extra. So I am running for the Shadow lineup, one Shekinaga. Shekinaga is a brilliant card, but I can't really bring it out that much in the deck. I mainly bring it out through Shadow Fusion with Glow Bulb or Shadow Core in probably the first or second turn. So only one Shek for this. For this um, deck, but it's a great defense that you can lock with down with um, Grista and take on quite a lot of decks, except Cosmo and Monarch. Monarch can get over a lot of things. Then two annoyed Tillis. I tried this at one, which I would be really my preferred um, level of annoyed Tillis as I would run. But unfortunately, I did need come into a point where I needed a second Annoy Tillis, and it does help with OTKs because El Shadal Fusion with Annoy Tillis, it makes a 2700 beat stick, which is always nice. And it also is kind of good against Despots if they're using Color Haunted or Powerful Rebirth. Then, two Grista, one of the best cards in the deck, because it negates Pendulums, which is amazing, and it can't be my respect to. Tempested because their monster is not summoned yet. You're negating it, unless they have one already out and then you're kind of fucked then. But it is a very powerful card in that sense. It's a once per turn effect, unfortunately, but it's during evil player's turn, so that's always good. And you, the basic all should all fusion monsters effects adds back their spell and trap to, the, to your hand at the end when they're sent to the graveyard. So that's always good. And then Triple Winder, it's a bit more Winder Control based in the sense, but I don't think I'll ever go into a third Winder. There is times where it could happen, but I don't want to do that much. If you want to take out one of the Winders and put in another, sh another Synchro of Exceed, that's up to you. Then onto two Gradle Dragon, you don't need three. Looping Gradle Dragon is good enough. If they negate the first, you go for the second, and then you've got loops for days, which is always fun. And Grail Dragon just pops two cards in their field, and that's so good. Unfortunately, it targets, which is annoying. Then one Leo, because you still can do a lot of things with Leo. You can still bring out level 10s, and you can sync with that Gradle Dragon with that Falco. Bring out Leo, like you would in the good old days with Constructs. And then finally, one Trisha Love for the Synchros. Because I put Trisha Love in more or less anything now that I have one. And now I have an ulti one that I pulled last weekend, so I'm so happy about that. And yes, Trisha Love is a very powerful Synchro monster, and we all know what Trisha Love does. Should not have come off the ban list, but hey, we got Regeki, so we might as well have Trisha Love. Then onto the Exceeds, one Castell, which is staple in this format, Diamond Dyer, which is actually a staple in this format because of Pendulums and Sidek cards, and then one Emerald for when you've run out of either Shadows, Shadow Fusion Monsters, or 
your gradles themselves and you want to recycle them. Emerald is becoming more and more applicable in decks that have, well, dual uh, synergy. So, yeah, it helps in um, Necro's Gem Knights and it will help in this deck. And just to mention some other cards that you could be using, um, a, set, a third Super Rush Headlong is another option you could go for, or Shuffle Reborn, which also does work. I tried it in the Sneak um, when I was playing with Gradles, in the Sneak obviously, but, um, which doesn't hurt them because they only have their effect negated while they're on the field. And therefore, if you use, in that theory, if you use them for Shadow Fusion with the Shadow Monsters, they should gain their effects. Or if you snatch, you attack into them and then snatch steal with them, they should gain their effects that way as well. So it gives you a toolbox to anything in your graveyard in that sense. Although you have to make sure you're not going against a winder instantly and get uh, screwed over with your own card effect. I don't think I've ever done the second effect. Although you can, because you can uh, return your gradles at a snatch deal, destroy the monster, and get a draw, but you'll have to banish something from your hand, so you have to get rid of your hand which is not very applicable in this format for Shadows. And side deck cards that you could go into are Denko Seca because this um because you can take out your trap lineup and put some nice generic spells in there or something like that, put some dark holes and then put like a place at Denko in there and just have a full on assault with uh, Gradle's snatch stealing everything your opponent has, which is a very fun way of doing it. And yeah, Denko is quite a good card for Shadol decks, even without Constructs. And Kaijus, this may be the only way you'll get over Cosmo at this present moment in, with this deck. Cosmo with the worst matchup of all to go against this deck. Even Magispe Magispect is a better matchup than Cosmo for this deck. Because you can't get rid of an untaggable monster, because you no longer have a Construct to obliterate it with. And unfortunately, Noitilus does not have enough attack points. Shekinaga is an alright defense, but will eventually be taken, will eventually be run over by some shape or form. Winder can also help somewhat. Grista is not going to do anything in this in this matchup. Trishula can help as well because it doesn't target, but Kaiju's may be your better option because there is Kaiju Gradles. They have synergy there. But I would suggest if you are going to do this, put in some Doggerans or Comungus since they give you further access to Grista and, and Shekinaga. Particularly Comungus since Shekinaga is better in that matchup. So you can also fuse with them or you can tribute their monsters and go into plays with that. Originally another deck idea for Shadol was a Shadol Kaiju but it didn't have as much synergy and required remove, remove brainwashing in the deck, so Denko Seco wasn't very applicable in the deck. So yeah, this is my new Shadal deck, and it's the one I'll be playing IRL as a fun deck, because uh, I'm doing Magic Spectres as my main deck. So yeah, in theory and in testing, it has worked decently well, can, can be very dangerous, especially if your opponent doesn't know how to react to Shadals mixed with Gradles. But if you go against Cosmo, you're kind of dead anyway. So, yeah, Cosmo confirmed best deck in the format. So, yeah. Um, hope you've enjoyed this uh, deck profile. Le leave your comments below. You guys suggest the deck or uh, anything you think I should have put in the deck. That's always uh, welcome. And uh, please like, subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see further content. And, yeah, thank you for watching. Madarant, signing out.